Now let's take an example on how to find the Jacobian using direct differentiation. And for this example, we're going to use two R robots. So we have a two R robot here that has two joints, joint one with theta one and joint two with theta two. And we have here the ground frame zero and the end effector frame three. What we need to find, we need to find the Jacobian matrix in reference to frame zero and frame three. Remember, when we use direct differentiation, the Jacobian is, is in reference uh, zero, and then we can use the rotation matrix to find the Jacobian in reference uh, frame three. Now, when we use the Fourier kinematics, we can find uh, the, the DH parameters, and from the DH parameters, we can calculate the transformation matrices T01, T12, and T23. Multiply the three transformation matrices together, we find T03. So that defines the end effector frame relative to frame zero. Okay, now this is a key to this whole thing. Remember, we need to find direct differentiation of the of x and y and z function. So from this here, that last fourth column right here includes x, this is x, and this is y, and this is z. So if we extract these, we need to extract these out of the transformation matrix so that we can perform the direct differentiation on these axes. So extracting this will give us the position of frame three relative to frame zero. And that will be x, y, z of frame three relative to zero. And we get the equations for each one of these x and y and z from this transformation matrix. Now that we extracted the x and y and z uh, functions, we can differentiate these three functions with respect to theta 1 and theta 2. So uh, again, we can construct this equation here that we had earlier, uh, generated earlier. So we have x dot, y dot, and z dot equals to partial differential of x with respect to theta 1 and x with respect to theta 2, and then partial differential of y with respect to theta 1 and theta 2 and partial differential of z with respect to theta 1 and 2. And that would give me the Jacobian uh, relative to frame 0. And that would be a 3 by 2 for this particular example. Okay, And this is, will be multiplied by uh, the joint vector, uh, theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot. So we put this here again, theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot. And then this is our Jacobian matrix. We start now doing the partial differentiation. So I'm going to differentiate uh, x with respect to theta 1. We come here. Differentiation of L1 C1 will be uh, negative L1 S1 for this, right? Negative L1 S1. And then plus differentiation of L2 C12 will be negative L2 S12. Remember, uh, differentiation of cosine is negative sine and sine is cosine. So that gave me this particular element. And then for uh, x uh, with respect to theta 2, we do the partial differ the differentiation of x with respect to theta 2 here. I don't have any theta 2 here, so that would be 0. And then differentiation of this with respect to theta 2 will be negative L2 S12. Negative L2 S12 right here. Again, we do the same thing now for the y. Okay, We differentiate the y with respect to theta 1. We have theta 1 here and theta 1 here. So that would be L1 cosine theta 2, L1 cosine theta 2. For the second term, we have L2 cosine theta 1, 2, which is right, right here. And then going to the next element, <coughs> differentiation of y with respect to theta 2. We don't have theta 2 here, so that would be 0. And here we have theta 2, so differentiation will be L1, oh, I'm sorry, L2 times cosine theta 1, 2, which is right here. Uh, I'm sorry, that would be this element right here. And then for the third equation, we have 0. So partial differentiation with respect to theta 1 and 2, both of them will be zeros. Okay, So that generates our Jacobian directly in frame 0. And that would be our linear Jacobian. So if we take this out of this, then this would be our final answer for the Jacobian in reference to frame 0. Okay, so that answers uh, one part of the question. The other part is to find the Jacobian again in reference to frame zero. So to do this, we have to pre-multiply by the rotation matrix of frame zero relative to, to three. Okay, and that will give me Jacobian relative to frame 
3. So we got this from the transformation matrix uh, T0 relative to 3. But remember, uh, this is here transposed because uh, the original matrix, transformation matrix, was T of 3 relative to 0. So we transpose it uh, and, and put it here and then multiply it by J0. And that gives me this long uh, Jacobian matrix. But there are a lot of things that can be reduced. So these two terms are similar with opposite signs. So they go down to 0. And these two also go down to 0. And then what we have left here, we can always use appendix A to reduce it, and it will reduce down to L1, S2. And same for this also, it will reduce down to L1, C2 plus L2. And this here would reduce down to only L2. Okay, as you can see here, this is actually easy. It's not, you don't have to go to the appendices. This is S1, 2 square plus C2, C1, 2 square. So the common between them is L2 times S square plus uh, C square, that would be 1. So all what's left is L2. Okay? And then for the zeros, they stay 0 the way it is. So right now we have the Jacobian here relative to frame 3. And that would be the linear Jacobian relative to frame 3. Uh, the example we solved earlier is a planar example. And it doesn't include any angular velocities at the end of vector. But let's take uh, another example here that is out of plane. So it's non-planar 3R robot here. Um, so that would take the robot out of the plane and it can produce also angular velocities um, at the end of vector. Uh, so this uh, 3R robot has three joints, theta 1 and theta 2 and theta 3. Theta 1 here, when it rotates, it takes the whole robot out of the plane. Okay, and then theta 2 and theta 3 uh, just move within their own plane. Uh, we have identified uh, frame 0, the ground frame, and then frame uh, 4, which is the end of vector frame. And we define this length as L1 and L2 and L3 here. Okay, what we need to find, we need to find the Jacobian matrix of the end of vector frame 4 relative to frame 0. Okay, so we need just to find the Jacobian relative to frame 0. Uh, and we need to use the direct differentiation method. So if we go through this, we're going to first do the forward kinematics and find the DH parameters that I have listed here. And then from the DH parameters, we can find the transformation matrices uh, T01, T12, T23, and T34. Now, if we multiply these together, multiply T01 and T12, we get T02, and then we multiply T0, T2 times T23, and that gives us T03, and then multiply T03 times T34, and that gives us T04, okay? So the reason I wrote these, because we're going we're gonna to need them, and we'll use them in uh, the Jacobian for the angular velocities, so I just listed them here uh, for later use. But for now, for direct differentiation, this is the one that we are going to need uh, for direct differentiation. So for here, we can extract now the uh, position of frame 4 relative to 0. So from this t, we can find the position of frame 4 relative to frame 0 right here. This is the fourth column right here. So this is x, and this is y, and this is z. Okay. So from here, we found the position of frame 4 relative to 0, x, y, z equals to these three equations from the transformation matrix. Now that we defined the x and y and z positions of frame 4 relative to frame 0, uh, I looked at the equation for x and equation for y and equation for z uh, that can be used for direct differentiation uh, to find the Jacobian. So to go through the direct differentiation, I don't need to put the Cartesian velocities here and the joint velocities here. I can just go directly to the Jacobian since it's directly defined using partial derivatives of these three equations. Okay, so uh, for the first row, I'm going to look at the definition of x. So the x equation here, uh, we, we need to differentiate this with respect to theta 1 and theta 2 and theta 3 to fill out the first row. Okay. So differentiation of this equation with respect to theta 1, we have cosine theta 1 here that turns into negative sine theta 1. And everything in this bracket is constant with respect to theta 1. So that turns out to be constant here as well. 
Now for the second element, we go differentiate this with respect to theta 2. So that differentiation will be placed in the second element. And then for the third element, again we differentiate x with respect to theta 3. And that will be placed here in the third element of the first row. Now for the second row, I look at the y equation. I differentiate y with respect to theta 1. And that will be, that will be placed in the first element of the second row. And then differentiation of y with respect to theta 2. And that will be second element in the second row. And then we we'll differentiate y with respect to theta 3. And that will be the third element in the second row. Now for the third row, I go to the z equation. I differentiate z with respect to theta 1. As you obviously hear, there is no theta 1. So differentiation will be 0. And then I differentiate z with respect to theta 2 and place it here in the second element of the third row. And then I differentiate z with respect to theta 3 and place it here in the third element in the third row. So that gives me basically a 3 by 3 Jacobian that defines the linear Jacobian with respect to a reference frame 0. Now for the angular velocities Jacobian, as I mentioned earlier, we cannot use direct differentiation to obtain the angular velocities. Uh, because a rotation matrix cannot be directly differentiated uh, the way we differentiate the x and y and z. So instead of using the direct differentiation, we're going to use this method that we looked at earlier. And that defines the angular Jacobian in reference to frame 0. So each one of these uh, expressions here becomes a single uh, column. So column 1 and column 2 and column 3. Uh, this here defines k1, and k1 is always 1 for revolute joints and 0 for prismatic joints. And then we put multiply that by r01, and we can take this directly from the transformation matrix of 1 relative to 0. And z11 is always 0, 0, and 1. So that gives me this first column of the Jacobian. For the second column, I have k2, which is again 1 for revolute joint and 0 for prismatic, prismatic joints. And then this is multiplied by R02 times Z22. Now I want you to pay attention to this R02. It's not R12, it's R02, which is R12 times R2, uh, I'm sorry, uh, R01 times R12. So make sure that you put here R02, not R12. And this is multiplied by 001 as well. For the third uh, column here, we have K3, again, 1 for revolute joint and 0 for prismatic joints. And here we use R03, not R13 or R23, it's R03. And then this is multiplied by Z33, which is 001 uh, for uh, all the cases. Now, since we have all revolute joints, all, all our joints are revolute joints, all the cases here have a value of 1. Now, if we, if we plug in the values for all of these uh, elements, we have K1 to be 1, and then R01 taken directly from T01, and Z11 is 001. That's the first column. Second column, I have K2, which is 1. R02, we already found this expression from T02 earlier in this example, and multiplied by Z22, which is 00 and 1. For the third column, we have K3, which is 1, and then R03, which is again we defined directly uh, from T03 that we found earlier in this example and then multiplied by Z33 which is right here. Okay so if we do these multiplications we're going to come up with a 3 by 3 Jacobian that defines the angular Jacobian in reference to frame 0. Okay now again if we would like to change the reference frame to be reference to frame 4 then we pre-multiply this by the rotation matrix. And the same for the linear Jacobian as well. Now that we have the linear and angular Jacobians, we are ready to uh, get the general Jacobian by combining the two together. So the general Jacobian in reference to frame zero, the first three by three elements are the linear Jacobian that we take from uh, this linear Jacobian matrix right here, and we place them right here. And for the lower part of the uh, Jacobian, we take this from the angular Jacobian matrix, 3 by 3 that we place here. And that gives me a 6 by 3 Jacobian matrix that represents uh, the general Jacobian in reference to frame 
0.